the Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com. Welcome back to the Sports Renegades here on SportsTownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stupridge. And I'm Ryan Risky. That was the uh, old Cavs uh, fight song back in the 80s when Jordan kept beating Craig Elo on game-winning shots. Well, he did that once anyway. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, we're talking about the NBA playoffs. And as you could guess, it's Boston and Cleveland in the Eastern Conference Finals. And it's San Antonio and Golden State in the Western Conference Finals. And... It looked good for a while on, on Sunday afternoon. It looked like the Spurs were rolling. They were up by 25 at one point on the Golden State. And Kawhi Leonard goes, Kawhi down, Leonard goes down. And then the Warriors proceed to go on an 18-0 to, to zero run. And uh, the, I mean, it was a close and competitive game, at least, throughout. But the Warriors ended up winning by two. And uh, then they blew them out uh, two nights ago. And that's pretty much all she wrote. I don't, I don't think the uh, Spurs have a chance. I know they'll be back in San Antonio, but I don't and think they have Leonard, a chance. I think, is still questionable. He's still questionable. Uh, I, I mean, Kawhi Leonard really is a difference maker. He's a great player, obviously, but he can't take on that Warriors team by himself. That's the problem. Uh, and, I mean, I wouldn't say that Zaza Pachulia is, uh, I guess it was sort of a box out on, on, on Kawhi Leonard, and then he kind of stepped on him. And tweaked his ankle. I wouldn't say it was a dirty play, but he definitely knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. That's see, that's the thing. Like he knew what he was doing. Right. So uh, I mean, he knew what he was doing, and uh, he's done it before. I guess I, I don't remember what, how, uh, where, but he, you know, he has sort of a history of these things, sort of like Draymond Green, but not as severe as Draymond Green. Um, so. I mean, well, Draymond Green's are suspendable <laughs> offenses, and for whatever reason, he was never getting suspended. God, isn't he so annoying on the floor, the way that he plays? He's just so annoying. He's always Let's screaming. Let's just kick a guy in the nuts. He's always yelling at the refs about every play, even when you know it's I think the Warriors have grown. Have, like, they now bitch about everything, and they act, they, do. Too, they act way too cocky. They definitely do. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely cocky. Uh, that's for sure. I mean, they, they haven't lost a game yet, so they, they do have a right, but... It's just, um, you know, come finals time, you know, that that's not going to be a sweep, Golden State. No, they're not going to. So. Yeah, I think Cleveland will find a way to beat him again. Like, well, I hope so. LeBron has been playing so much out of his mind that I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter what Golden State's going to do. You know, the other team that's really been annoying me is Boston. They they are a bunch of annoying players on that floor. Not necessarily Isaiah Thomas, but Isaiah Thomas takes these crazy shots and misses a lot of them. He makes a lot of them, too, but he misses a lot of them. And the one guy on the floor, so annoying, is that Olenek, uh, K- K- Kelly Olenek. He, he, is, he, he is something else. He's annoying. He, he complains about every play, too. He's kind of like Draymond Green in that sense. It, it, I, I don't know. I wanted the Wizards to beat the the Celtics uh, in that game seven. I, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I wanted it to happen. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, nobody can stop LeBron. No, I mean, that's the thing. No one can stop. At LeBron. one point, they had Isaiah Thomas on LeBron. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> LeBron could just go right around him and just lay it in every time. So I don't understand that. Um, see, and. Uh... See, LeBron hasn't lost a playoff game since Game Four of the Finals, I believe. Right? That's right, because they won five, six. See, and seven, everyone's making yep. a big deal that Golden State's the first team to start out ten and zero in a postseason or something. I'm just like Cleveland's going to do the same thing. Cle- Cleveland's going to do the same thing, right? Uh, now, if I were to predict a team to lose a game first, I would say it's probably Cleveland. Uh, I I think Boston maybe will win a game uh, against them. Uh, because I, but I, I don't think San Antonio is going to win a game against Golden well, State. Well, I think they can. They'll be able to pull out a home game if Leonard's back. Maybe. I, hey, I, I, I hope they do. I feel like that first game was kind of like the series because Leonard went down. They blew a massive lead on the road, and it, even if they, even if they had won that game without Leonard, whatever, however badly Golden State beat them in Game Two would have been the, one of the most irrelevant things. San Antonio right. would have invaded Golden State, took did their job and won one of two, and then come back home for games three yeah, and four. Yeah, I mean, imagine how much different 
it would be and what we'd be talking about if it was 1-1 going back to San Antonio with a healthy Kawhi Leonard. Uh, I mean, yeah, then you're talking about, you know, probably splitting in San Antonio going back 2-2 to Golden State and then uh, everything's on the table then. Um, but now, yeah, and now it's uh, it's pretty much done. And Kevin Durant's starting to turn it on and uh, and it's Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, I mean, they don't even need like one of those players to do good. If, if they just get two of those players to do good, along with Draymond Green doing mm-hmm. his thing, then they're pretty much set for the finals anyway. Um, and now, when you talk about Cleveland, you know Kevin Love had a great game yesterday. He was just hitting three after three. It was great. Um, and of course, LeBron James did his thing, and Kyrie Irving did his thing. And I mean, that's a huge big three that they got right there. And again, if they only get two of those three players doing good, with LeBron being one of those players, obviously, then they'll be in good shape, too, and they'll be set for the finals as well. So, I mean, it, it's really shaping up. I, I, I mean, I know it's kind of upsetting that it's going to be the same matchup three years in a row, but I think this year it's going to be the most the competitive. NBA isn't as ex- playoffs aren't as exciting as other sports. Because as every it's other not com- sport. Yeah, yeah it's because it's not competitive. Not because no, in no other sports does everyone just decide to team up. Like, Kevin Durant becomes a free agent, like, I'm just going to team up with Steph with a team that won 73 games last year. If you can't beat them, join them. That's what Kevin Durant did. I mean, I mean, I mean, that is such a bitch move. He, I, I lost so much respect for Durant after he did that, but. I never liked him to begin with, and this I know my you point. Didn't, this proved why I hated him. Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I liked him coming out of college at, at Texas in 2007. I think he was the number two. Two, two pick. Over, overall pick. Greg Oden was number one. Oh yeah, God, what a bust that was. But uh, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I really liked him. He played for the Super Sox for one year, and then they changed to Oklahoma City, and things were rolling. They were in those 2012 Finals. I was rooting for them so hard against the Miami Heat, and they won one game. I think Oklahoma City won one game. I and believe they won the first game. It might have been the first game, and so then they lost four straight. I, I was so excited after that, but uh. Yeah, it, it's um, yeah, you know, it's a bit upsetting uh, what he did, obviously. But um, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think this year is going to be the most competitive of the three matchups. I know last year went seven. How could you say be more competitive than that? Yeah, but I, I mean, we're shaping up for another Golden game. State, seven. Golden State is even more stacked this year. They are, but I think the will of LeBron will take them to seven games. Probably. Here's, I feel like Cleveland is playing the best basketball that they've played. Since LeBron, Kyrie, and Love joined, no question. Like, I mean, no they didn't question. technically join forces. They drafted LeBron, drafted slash signed LeBron as a free agent. They drafted Irving and traded for Love. Yeah, I, I mean, and Kevin Love wanted out of Minnesota, but uh, I mean, I, I mean, maybe now it would have been a different story. But yeah, he uh, he kind of, I mean, he, he he didn't necessarily demand a trade, but he did, but he definitely wanted to be traded, and he sure was happy that. He was traded to, to yeah, Cleveland. Yeah, Minnesota is better off trading him because they got they got Wiggins. You got Andrew Wiggins, you got Carl Anthony Towns, and you got Tibbs. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> and you've got Tibbs. Tibbs Plus you got Chris everything. Dunn, who was selected fifth overall last year, who could be pretty good from from Providence College. He he, he was pretty good in the Big East a few years ago. He was probably a, and he was the kind of, of guy that like received high praise for his defense coming into the draft. Yeah, he's a perfect Thibodeau. Yeah, guy. so you already know he's a good Thibodeau guy. So yeah, uh, that so I mean I think that this will probably go seven six at least uh and i mean yeah it's upsetting because when you look at every other sport the the playoffs certainly aren't set especially in the stanley cup playoffs where not even the first you can't even predict the first round games right in the stanley cup no nope the blackhawks showed us that uh and then even all the other games like i mean and then washington almost lost I mean, you can't even predict the first round games right in the in the NHL playoffs, let right. alone. And then even you know, in just, the same sport with college basketball, I mean, March Madness, call it March Madness for I a reason. I feel like that's different because it's one and done. You know, it's not a seven game series. True, but it, you know, it's a, but it's like a game seven every night, which is really exciting. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, even there, I mean, there's so much unpredictability. Oh, oh, I thought you were comparing that to the NBA. Well, no, I was just talking okay, about what's... Okay, yeah, you're comparing that to the unpredictability, how you just never... that. Okay, I completely <laughs> mis- misheard that. That's okay. Uh, yeah, no, I, you're, you're completely right. Every game is a game seven, and really, beside, besides, like, a couple, you know, like, besides, like, the one and 16 and the two and 15 matches, anything can happen. Like, remember, Fred Hoiberg was a three seed and lost to a 14 in the first round yep. his final year at Iowa State. Right, and... Uh, and Duke lost in the first weekend this year, and they've done that a few times, which a lot of people haven't predicted. Uh, you know, it, 
And, uh, I mean, I know North Carolina ended up going all the way and how the national championship game was two one seeds and a competitive game for the most part. I mean, I wonder how – I mean, that doesn't happen often that one seeds actually make it. No, the... it, barely ever do two one seeds face off in the final. There, I mean, there's usually of, one there. Usually but... you're surprised if two one seeds make it to the final four. Right. Let alone the actual finals. Yeah, so, I mean, that doesn't happen that often. So – uh yeah I I mean obviously you know these finals are set with Cleveland and Golden State but uh I I mean it, it's still gonna be fun to watch it's always fun to watch LeBron James and then you know we'll see if Steph and Clay and Durant can compete with him as far as uh, doing that I you know the big key for me for Cleveland is rebound their misses because it, you know Golden State misses a lot. Right, I mean, it's also going to be key if if it's either close or Cleveland's up kind of later because they can just put LeBron on Curry. Right, and and, and when you do that, then you know, although I mean, then you have I mean, it frees up KD, yeah, which it frees is a up problem. KD. But uh, I, I mean, in and also, time, I think Kevin Love is going to be a big X factor because I don't remember him like you know being like great in those last three games last year of the finals. Right, like it was mostly LeBron and Kyrie. It, it was mostly Kyrie, especially for for a lot of that. But yeah, it was. Well, also he hit the Kyrie. game winning shot. Except, I mean, LeBron played out of his mind in those last three games. Yeah, they 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 were not going to lose, especially that game six in Cleveland. They were not going to lose in Cleveland. That's for sure. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the finals are set. Uh, I mean, we can pretty much say that now. It's pretty much set in stone for the third year in a row. Uh, so that's sort of where we're at. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll talk about the Bulls coming up next. That should be fun. And then we'll talk about the Cubs. They just came off a sweep of the Reds, and the White Sox are scuffling. They've lost, what, four or five in a row at least. And some pretty bad losses, like Lou Reed oh Garcia letting gosh. a fly ball hit off of his head. Yeah, I, I, I thought it hit off of his head. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, some, some bad baseball being played, which is expected with a rebuilding team. But, yeah, uh, we'll talk about all that next coming up on Sports Renegades, SportstownChicago.com. The Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com.